I'll tell you a little story about a mentor of mine. This is a man that I met about 45 years ago. His name was Ken Wilton. And Ken Wilton was um, a great inspiration for me to get into my woodworking even more so. But it was, this was a guy who was multi-talented with his hands. This guy was incredible. He was intelligent as anyone I've ever met, but he was a, a very hands-on person. He was a gunsmith. And I met Ken because I inherited my father's shotgun. And my father's shotgun, he had it his whole life. And I, I remember going hunting with my dad. We'd go out shooting quail and pheasant and doves. And, you know, we, uh, we, we fed ourselves quite often with this, this gun. And this gun meant a lot to me. It's, a, it's an 1897 Winchester pump, 12-gauge pump. And it still works quite well. 1897. Well, it was broken. The stock was cracked. The four piece up here was missing and a lot of the mechanics of it were in bad shape. So I was asking around for a gunsmith, somebody that could help me out. And Ken Wilton was recommended to me and he didn't live too far from me. He lived in Saratoga. And so I went over to Ken's house, I knocked at his door, and he was retired at the time. And he, I showed him the gun, and he said, yeah, I, I can fix that for you. He asked me if I had any walnut, and I, I did. I had some walnut from a tree that I cut down, so I gave him some of the walnut I had, and he used that to turn this four-piece. So there's a little bit of, you know, passed on history there. You know, my father's gun. I'm going to give this to one of my kids. I'm not sure which one yet, but, you know, that four piece there it comes from a tree that I cut down so a bit of <laughs> sentimental value to it anyway long story short is Ken became a very good friend of mine it took him over a year to return this gun to me I kept stopping by and he said yeah I'm still working on it still working on it and after a year he called me up and I went by and it was just like this it wasn't restored to brand new condition by any means because it's an antique gun but it was functional and intact, and I was incredibly happy. I, and I offered him, I said, what, what can I pay you for this? You know, whatever. And he says, you know what? Let's just, let's just call it, uh, you owe me a favor. And I thought, okay, what does that mean? <laughs> so over time, Ken would call me up and say, hey, I need some firewood. So I'd give him some firewood. And I'd stop over and say, hey, Ken, I need something fixed. And he'd fix it for me. We had this back and forth arrangement that went on for decades. Once in a while, he'd have a tool that I was interested in and I'd buy it from him. But for the most part, it was uh, pretty much give and take, give and take. And he helped me many, many times. You know, he helped me re-weld one of my chippers one time that was broken down. Well, Ken passed away about eight years ago and I didn't really realize what I lost in terms of a mentor until he was gone. And I came to the realization that this man had a wealth of knowledge that may never, ever again be restored by anybody. I mean, who knows how to fix things like this? I'm sure there's young gunsmiths out there that can, you know, come up, but he, he just knew this shotgun inside and out and he was such a talented man and in his shop his workshop his garage shop he had all the equipment to build a full working rifle he, he could take raw stock and drill a barrel rifle it create every aspect of the rifle or shotgun and and they were amazing i mean this guy was a true master gunsmith that was his occupation. He had a gun shop for a long, long time. I acquired a few of Ken's tools when he passed away, and this was one of them. This is kind of interesting. Ken Wilton, K.B. Wilton, Saratoga, 1970. He made that. He was also into sewing leather. And this is what he took when he went out hunting with his black powder gun. He had all these little cartridges here full of black powder, they're still full of black powder. And 
He kept his balls and his wads and all the equipment inside this pack that he made. But he also made this little knife right here. He, uh, he liked to go hunting for deer. And he made this knife, which I thought was just amazing. You know, it's, it's got two-sided saw blades for cutting through the bones and whatnot. And really interesting, in the end here, I don't know if you can see that, there's a little screw. You need a screwdriver to open it up. But he drilled out a little compartment and he's got about six or eight strike anywhere matches inside this little <laughs> little saw that he had and it was all part of his his uh, his kit here anyway things like that really really impressed me um when he passed away like i said i acquired quite a few of his tools i had to buy some of them off of his son and his son was in his 70s. Ken died at age 94, and his son was in his early 70s, but he had no interest in any of the tools, no interest in anything that his father had. So he had a big sale and he sold everything off. And I acquired all of Ken's files, rasps, um, floats, all the different tools that he used for building his, his guns, as well as the woodworking parts of it. So I've got uh, several hundred files, and I'll, I'll show them to you in a second here. <laughs> Probably never going to use all these files. There's more files than I can ever use in my entire life. But keeping the entire collection together, I think, was important. Now, as you can see, he had specialized files for each of the things that he was doing, including very, very tiny files, and he separated out his wood files from his metal files, working on metal, working on wood. And he had this collection of green handled files, which I think are, are actually beautiful. And I think this drawer really needs to be organized just to showcase the green files. But most of the stuff in here is from his collection. He spent his entire life building up all the tools that he needed to perfect his craft. And it just really bothered me to see it just get distributed and dispersed. So I kept a few things that uh, really meant something to me about Ken. And sometimes some of the tools that I use, you know, I'll, I'll put the tool in my hand and I'll be working away and I can almost feel the essence of this old mentor that meant so much to me. So, I know I'm getting a little long-winded here. Mentors, if you're young and have an old man in your life or old woman, somebody that can teach you something, that is a gift. And that is something that you really need to recognize. And I, I hate to say take advantage of it, but don't discount it. You know, age has a lifetime of wisdom that comes with that old age. And I'm getting old now, I'm 70. So I hope to be a mentor to some young people. I think I have been my, my whole life, but it's about passing it on. And if you're older and you can be a mentor to a young person, think about how valuable that can be. We're not here for, you know, very much longer. You know, if I'm lucky, I've got another 20 in me, but, uh, the last few years, you really, really slow down. You don't think as clearly. So take advantage of the time that you've got left in your life and give back. Thank you for coming into my shop and hearing my <laughs> long-winded story about Ken Wilton. Now, this old leather-bound idea book is something I keep in my chest because once in a while I come up with a good idea for a piece of furniture or, or something I want to build, and I scratch it down in there so I don't forget it. And from time to time, I just open it up and peruse and think, yeah, I'm going to build that. Now, I love this old, well, it's not a, 
It's an old collection of tools. Almost everything I've got in here are antique woodworking tools. There's a old gauge right there, ebony and brass. That's probably 200 years old. But these tools, they all still work. Every single tool I have in here is a user tool. Some of them aren't quite as old, but uh, uh, there's something I made about uh, 35 years ago. Made a whole collection of these. They were pencil boxes and boxes for different types of pastels and such. Here's a tool that I broke a handsaw blade, but it was in good shape, so I made a short handle for it. And I decided I wanted a custom grip for this. These are were pruning saws, which I still use for woodworking. But uh, yeah, that was uh, interesting. I, I made a piece of clay to make a grip. And that is my oldest tool. That dates back to the late 1700s. That's a spoke shave. And those uh, brass nuts on the top are, are handmade. Um, I, I use everything in this tool chest. And sometimes I will just pull it out and I'll open it up. I'll take some wood to the vise. And I will try to just build something just with the hand tools. This is an old brace. This is uh they call an egg beater drill. And here's something that's really old. I don't know the date of it, but that's also, that predates the egg beater drill. We got a few really ancient drill tools in here. Got a collection of wooden planes in the back. 